So does this map to politics in any significant way as far as like uh, getting political candidates that are, you know, like the best? Like, is there a standardization that can go into the political process that would ensure a meritocracy and not just people with identities trying to shout from the rooftops? Yeah. So the worst, two of the worst parts of our system right now, in my opinion, that lead to these are institutional things that lead to bias. Mm -hmm. One is we've gotten rid of competitive elections. So it used to be the case that most of the elections in this country were super competitive. Like I'm talking about like the district level or county level or state level. And so what, what that meant was that the politicians had to actually try to appeal to as many people as possible. They had to come up with policies that made most people happy. What we've got now is through gerrymandering, it's most districts are safe Democrat or safe Republican. And so what that means is you can get the really extreme people who don't try to make their local constituents happy because they don't have to because they're pretty much guaranteed to win. And so you're selecting for people who are like at the extremes, who have real fringe beliefs. And so you get more and more of those people in you know, Congress or the Senate. And all of a sudden, those are the people who don't want to cooperate with anybody on the other side of the aisle or even talk to them. And so if you look over time, last 60 years, there's a great gif of like, like 10 second gif. You can see of like, used to be people voted together on common bills and found common ground on some things, which when they're doing that, it's because it's in the interest of most people, right? Mm -hmm. um, they found some compromise that works for 60, 70, 80% of Americans. But what you've got is over time, it's like two cells pulling apart. Yeah, it's like meiosis and or it's, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, Cell splitting. And it, there's almost no people talking to one another. And they've actually, this, I mentioned this study in my book, they did an analysis of just people like sitting in Congress and did they actually go and talk, walk over to somebody different than them? And people aren't even walking over and talking to people from the other party as much. And so it's like at every level from whether we're talking about where people live in neighborhoods, who they vote for, who they talk to, who you date or marry, it's pulling apart. So I think one of the first things is just like having... Um, competitive elections. Or there's other types of voting. I think this is in California where you rank order your choice. Mm -hmm. And so um, even if your first choice person doesn't win, maybe your second choice person was win win because you can kind of like rank them up. Mm -hmm. And so it turns out like that is another way to get rid of like super polarizing figures. It's just giving letting people like rank order. That's interesting. And so, and that ends up selecting for people who are like broadly popular and broadly interesting to people rather than like just giving them the parties pick the most extreme people and then you get stuck with them. And then because of gerrymandering, those are the people who represent us. Wow. And it sucks because yeah, people, people are irritated. People are identifying with their party a little bit less than ever because they're more and more likely to be independent. And because they're kind of sick of the system, they see people running and they don't think those people don't represent me. And in fact, those people don't try to represent them a lot of times. They don't try to have policies that are like broadly popular. Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel. Like I would mentioned before, I feel politically disenfranchised. Like mm -hmm. every election, I'm 27 years old. Every election that I had the opportunity to vote in, I felt like was kind of bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like since I've been 18, I was like, I don't like either of these choices. I could kind of go with like the lesser of two evils, I guess. Yeah. Like I don't even think my interests are really involved. I think... The corporations that are kind of like funding these politicians probably have yeah. a bigger say than I do individually. So like, I could vote with my dollars. I don't. Know. I do, I just get, yeah. I get kind of overwhelmed, and I just sort of say like, "Fuck all this. Yeah. This is not for me." And I kind of throw my hands up. I'm like, "Ugh." Yeah. What would be your advice to someone like me that feels disenfranchised? I mean, it sucks because it's the system we're in. So I don't actually blame you. I can't vote because I'm not an American citizen. <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> um, but I think like where it might matter is like doing things at your community level. Like, mm -hmm. first of all, you can vote in like your local elections and right. those people actually like matter to your life. Mm -hmm. They matter whether like the streets are clean or there's garbage on, on the street or, you I've know. I've actually started looking into this because yeah. someone else had mentioned this to me. They were like, yeah, like local elections will be actually what matters. Yeah. And so I've started like just kind of like Googling like, all right, who's running for like district, you know, clerk yeah. of courts or whatever. I'm, I'm like looking around and just trying to see what's happening. But I also want to hope that the local election is still competitive. Yeah, yeah. And so is there a way to tell if my district is gerrymandered? I mean, here's the other thing is you, well, yeah, there are, I don't have that data, but there are websites that present that. Um, but it, at the local thing, you can actually like go and influence. I had a friend who like actually, sw he was in a, he was in a, this was in Canada, but he was in a state or a province that was pure, they'd voted conservative forever and ever and ever. And he's not conservative, but he joined the party so he could vote in the primaries and vote for someone who at least wasn't like extreme. Hmm. 
And he signed up other people and they weren't conservative, but they wanted to say. And so in a gerrymandered place like that, the best way to get involved is like at the party level, the primary, where you can actually like vote and your vote actually carries more weight because most people don't do that. Interesting. Um, I'm also, I actually, when my book came out, it got picked up by, um, the, in the California governor's office, they have a new minister of like civic service. So I'll tell you about this cool, this is just starting, it's a cool idea. And Josh Friday is the guy, he's like the minister. They just created his position. And he worked, he was in the military and he was, um, he wanted something like um, the Peace Corps, but for American citizens that don't have to go to another country. So he did, so they created this for California. So they're giving 10,000 students, like college students, they give them a $10,000 tuition reduction hmm. to just help out in their local community, go to a soup kitchen, clean the highway, do stuff. And, and guess what? You end up meeting all kinds of people when you do that. Hmm. You meet people who are, and he's like, we're getting people who come into this and try it. And they'll meet somebody who has di radically different politics from them, but actually see them as a human being and understand them in a more nuanced, complex way. That's interesting. And meanwhile, they're paying, they're helping their tuition. So it's helping them get through college because mm -hmm. tuition's insanely expensive now. Mm -hmm. And it's also like giving them some work experience and it's also cleaning up communities. And so I thought like, and it gives them a sense of civic purpose because they're cleaning up their community. Hmm. And so I, and he, his goal is if this works or they reach out to me to like, can we test this? Can you get some data on this? Um, and so, and I, I didn't, I'm not paid by them or anything just to be clear, there's no conflict of interest. Um, but the, the, the goal he said is to see if it works. And then if, can you scale something like that? So like this whole generation of young people, A, you're helping them get through college, which is really expensive and you're helping clean up communities and you're also creating an identity. Their goal is to create an identity of them as Californians. Hmm. So your identity is not Republican or Democrat, but Californian. And so you care about the current and future state of California. You care about like your neighbors um, and you want to like make it beautiful and safe and healthy. And I thought that was just a really cool vision. I wish we had like more stuff like that. Yeah, that's cool. And it was less divisive and more about contact, more about interacting with people, more about like doing something concrete. So the other, the other thing I'll tell you. First, tell me what you think about that, and then I'll. I think it's interesting, actually. Yeah. I mean, I've always been fond of the idea of like a national service. Yeah. So, like, you don't necessarily have to like. Obviously, some countries do like national military service, which, mm -hmm. depending on the country, I actually think is like kind of cool. Like yeah. Korea does it. I know that you. I, I can just see how that would instill a level of patriotism and desire yeah. to support your country, because mm -hmm. obviously Korea is in kind of like a, a standing conflict. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, none of the guys that I know that have ever served are actually, like, you know, seeing yeah. you know, combat. But you just get a sense of, like, oh, I am, this is what it means to be Korean, and I, yeah. like, serve time for my country. Yeah. So I actually think that's, like, kind of a cool idea. I don't think it's necessary in America, but the idea of national service, you know, going out and, you know, working in a national park. Yeah. You know, working even, like, in a local state park or yeah. just some type of, like, you know, cleaning your community, whatever that is, yeah. for a period of time. I actually think it's a really interesting idea for giving people a sense of patriotism i think uh my friend john it's a different type of patriotism right because yeah. it's not waving a flag yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not symbolic it, it's, it's real it's on the ground it's ownership over yeah it. 